Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today I'm going to be talking about my audio wrap up. Let's get going. So, I don't know what's up with my main month, but I kind of have like ups and downs from my books. So, I don't know what was happening over there, but I feel like I still read like quite a lot of audio books. So, um, let's just get going. So, my first book was A Day of the Fall and Night by Samantha Shannon. This is the prequel to the Priory of the Orange Tree, and I was a little bit confused. So, this is what the story is. Basically, it's, so this is before the Priory of the Orange Tree, I think it was around 500 years ago, and into the lives of four women, showing us a course of events that shaped the world for generations to come. I gave it two stars, and I DNF'd at 28%. What went wrong? I'm glad you asked. It was boring. Literally, literally, nothing was happening at all. And I just couldn't really get into it. I literally had to struggle to get into it because everything was just so slow and nothing was happening at all. Um, I kind of started to like Lorian and kind, I, I kind of liked her mother, but afterwards she just basically imitated me. I honestly feel like the priority was a little bit better than a prequel, but like both, but like both of the books was so slow. And honestly, the book was a little bit too wordy, so I got so I had like way too much words and. So yeah, so I had like too much words and. I also think the book was a little bit confusing, it wasn't nearly explained well as the priory, and the plot wasn't even there at all, so I didn't finish it and the plot was just basically non-existent, so I just couldn't even finish the book. So my next book was The Stand Down Motel by Simone St. James, and the sequence looking in a rundown and roadside mother and stay a young woman just as it did her aunt 35 years before in this new atmospheric suspense novel. So this is like spooky vibes with, paran with paranormal vibes to it, so it has ghosts and spirits and all that, which I really liked. Um, the thriller was okay, like I, was, I kind of felt like there was a lot of story that was just repetitive and so we basically follow you live in the, back in the 1980 and her niece Carly was in 2017. So it's kind of hard to tell the chapters apart just because I felt like they were similar almost but they were just too repetitive to even tell apart. And the writing style was okay, and then something would happen and be revealed in like the million chapters. But then, as we were reading Colleen's chapters, we already knew what happened because of Vivian's chapters. So that the mystery kind of felt flat because of that point. And so and there were just some parts that were just like dragging on and kind of a little bit slow to the start as well. So, yeah, and honestly, I kind of did start to lose interest, but like, I feel like the ending uh, finished the book in a really strong point. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were also like a few plot twists that I thought it did great, so I do give credit for that. But otherwise, this book was okay. I gave it a 3.5. I gave it a 3.5, so I do give credits where the plot twist is, so I really like the plot twists. And my next book is The Embroidered, the Embroidered Book by Kate Hartfield. So, 1768, Charlotte, thought of the Hammersburg Empress, arrives in Naples to marry a man she has never met. Her sister Anthony is sent to France, and in the mere corridors of Versailles, they rename her Mary Antoinette. The scissors are alone, but they are not powerless. When they were only children, they discovered a book of spells. Spells that would work with dark and unpredictable consequences. So, again, I gave this book a three stars. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of repetitive with three stars in this month. So, one thing I really like is that the author really did her research. Um, I didn't really know anything about Charlotte who came into this book, but Mary Antoinette's life. 
I thought the author did a really good job of researching, so I really like that a lot. And I also really like how the author made her characters be so flawed and not make them into these perfect human beings that we always see, so I do give her credit for that because I thought she had done a really nice job. And I also really like how she did the challenges as to how females were being seen back in the days because who wants to be ruled by a female, you know what I mean? So I feel like the challenges that she did was showing really, really great. So the only thing that really felt flat for me was the magic system because I didn't think this book was, ne was necessary to have a magic system in the first place. It is a historical fantasy, but I didn't think it needed a magic system because every time something went wrong, they would always blame it on a spell. So that was kind of a eh moment where I just didn't think it was just necessary. So. And in order to do magic, you have to sacrifice someone. So, it basically, like, it requires a magician to make a sacrifice. So, like, in emotions, so, like, in the form of an emotional connection or a memory, and then you can do magic. But that's the only thing that kind of made me feel flat because they constantly um, blame it on spell every time something went wrong. My the book is These Infinite Threads. It's the number two in This Woman Kingdom by Tahari Murphy. So with the heat of a kiss, the walls between Alize and the long lost hair to an ancient Asian kingdom and Kamala and the confluence of the Andunian Empire have crumbled. And so have both of the wives Alize, the hair to the Asian throne is destined to free her people from the half wives they have been forced to live under human rule. When Cameron the hair to the human throne falls in love with her, he is forced to question everything he has been taught about Jin. I give it a two stars. I just did not like Alan Zay at all. Just because of the repetitiveness of each word she takes. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you do this? How dare you do that? She always uses how dare you in every single sentence. I'm like, can you not say something else? <laughs> so like, why do you have to use that word so many times? It got so annoying. And then just, I hated it. I hated the moments, I hated the storyline. Nothing was going anywhere except for the last few chapters. The last few chapters towards the ending was when things were really picked up. I hate when books do that. There should always be something going on throughout the book, not to build it up towards the end. I get it, cliffhangers, I get it, but this book just didn't work out that, that way, so it just felt really flat and boring, and honest, honestly, nothing happened, in all honesty. So I just hated the romance. Uh, I, I guess the, like, the only character I really liked was Cyrus. He was an okay character, he didn't get annoying, all got on my nerves. Mm, but uh, he was the only one that kind of got me interested, but the rest of the characters, not so much, so I, I did want to DNF so many times, but I just kind of kept pushing through, but in the end, in the end it wasn't even worth it in the end, so I should have just DNF'd it, but um, yeah, I just gave it two stars. So, and as I said before, this book was way more focused on the romance, so which I hate. I swear, every time there's a sequel, that's, it's always focused on the romance. Like, is that just me, or has anyone else noticed that it's always on the romance of the sequels? Like, they got this nice little build-up in the first book, and then all of a sudden it's just romance in the sequel. I'm like, that's a plot. <laughs> And my last book is The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. It's number one in Detective Ellen Warner. You won't want to leave until you can. Health hidden by forests and overshadowed by threatened peaks, unless I'm met, has always been a sinister place. Long planned by troubling rumors, the former abandoned sanatorium has been, has been since renovated into a five star minimalist hotel. An imposing, isolated getaway spot high up in the Swiss Alps is the last place Ellen Warner wants to be. 
but Ellen's taken time off from her job as a detective, so when her estranged brother Isaac and his fiancée Lori. That light just went off and some reading spooky stories. Fantastic. Invite her to celebrate the engagement at the hotel. Lynn really has no reason not to accept. So, I gave her three stars. I really like the setting, you know, like setting in a Swiss office and it's all creepy and all that fun stuff. Um, but the thing that went wrong was like the elements that were in the book, like the most gruesome element they could find in the book. It just wasn't there. It didn't really, um, like, it didn't really develop that well, so that was kind of a bummer. And I hated the ending. It was like one of those, this is how I did it moments. I'm like, why would you pull that off? I hate it. No. Why is the suspense mystery? So that was kind of a dump, in all honesty. And also there was another twist, like something about a train I think it was, and I didn't really understand about the train twist. I just didn't really get that. Um, but um, it still is a suspense the novel is, but it was just so, I feel like the author was trying to do it so many at once because it would just lead you to different directions all the time. And just, it just, you know, too much to handle, I feel like. Um, but um, yeah, but the reveal, as I said, it was just clunky and unsatisfying. So there were loose ends that had been tied up, but I still feel like most of the map up isn't fully done. And yeah, so something, and also with the characters, um, they were questionable because there was some history and traits that didn't really match their actions. The main character, Ellen, she has like these frightening flashbacks from her previous case. But she's still willing to put herself in danger, so I, why would you want to do that if you had some fla terrifying flashbacks from before? I don't really like that, so you're just playing yourself watch trauma. So, so, and I, I also, so the murders are really brutal and graphic, but um, yeah, I still feel like there were some areas that could have been smoother and the ending to be a little bit stronger. But I still thought the mystery was unique and intense, and it, the plot wasn't really polished as well, so I still think the author could have used some work as well. Okay, so that was all the books I read in May, so it was up and down, unfortunately. So let me know what you have read in May, so please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!